What's up guys, Gabriel Varga here. Today we're gonna be looking at Masato versus Bukau, number two, the rematch. I'm gonna do a breakdown of it, I'm gonna commentate the fight, and then we're gonna stop periodically, and I'm gonna show you what happened, why it happened, why it was smart, why it wasn't smart. We're gonna do a nice breakdown of this amazing fight. And I wanna do this because I've been breaking down my own fights lately. I've also been looking at the assets of particular fighters, talking about Canelo, talking about McGregor, I'm gonna do many others. There's so much to learn from all the best fighters in the world, if we look at their fights and we break everything down. So that is what we're doing today. Let's get started. All right, guys, here we go. Masato versus Bakao one. This is just a quick recap of the fight. I think it's important to look at this and just get a feeling for why Masato got so rolled over. Now, something to keep in mind is this was the third fight for both of these guys in one night. And one of the issues I have with tournaments is they don't always have the winner, the best fighter coming out as the winner. Sometimes it's the person who's just better for tournament format, and that is generally the person who takes less damage. Bakao is a very low damage fighter. He's very good at maintaining distance with his kicks and then closing the distance and neutralizing damage from that clinch range. So I believe in this fight, Masato was already much more worn down, much more beat down between the two of them. And you can see here as we watch, Bakao just maintains uh, very good range and utilizes his front kicks, his round kicks, to just dominate Masato. Those front kicks especially to head level. And Masato just didn't really have an answer, but when I heard that the rematch was happening, I went, okay, Masato got annihilated in the first fight, but I believe he's the type of fighter who can make adjustments. And I think it'll be very interesting to see them fight fresh. Masato actually jumped on fighting Bakao in the quarterfinal of the K1 Max, I believe it was 2007 tournament that we're gonna be watching. He went, okay, I wanna fight him first. I want him fresh, which I think a lot of people would have avoided, but it was a very smart decision in my opinion. Because just fighting him, as you can see here in the end, he just gets ragdolled. It's just not a good indication of Masato's skills. And honestly, going into the second fight, I had Masato, the chance of him winning, sort of 45% chance, maybe 55% chance that Bukau would win. I had it very close. My brother, who's been very, very good, very smart at analyzing all my opponents, coming up with good game plans and recognizing things that I miss, he thought Masato had a 55% chance of winning and Bakao 45. And just, you know, you wouldn't think that watching this fight. When we watch this replay, this highlight, we just see domination. And you're going, what will Masato possibly do to make sure this doesn't happen again? I mean, it's, it's a good question. And, and something that most people, when I talked to them before we watched the, the rematch in 2007, most people didn't really think that Masato would have any chance, especially against a brand new fresh Bokao who could just toss him around like that. It's just amazing watching these two guys with their stylistic, stylistic differences go up against one another. I heard the Masato after this fight was hospitalized and was in there for a while. Might have I heard something about uh, having his nose his nose fixed. Now was it from Bacau? Maybe not, because he already fought two times before. But this fight was just incredible that Masato could even walk out after this. So let's now that we've seen the recap fast forward to the actual fight. And here we go, guys. Round number one: Masato versus Bukau two from 2007 K1 Max quarterfinals. A very nice front kick from Bacal right off the beginning, maintaining that distance. One of the first things that we'd be looking for out of Masato is how is he going to deal with the distance? How is he going to close that distance? And he's been fairly quick there, getting the hands and the low kick going. Fairly aggressive. And I think that's going to be a key to beating Bacal. You can't let him dictate the pace of the fight. Masato does that very, very well. But man, those low kicks, oh, that is scary. When you can pick somebody's leg off the ground like Masato, you can actually kick it and throw him that substantially. His leg just lifts up. That just demonstrates the power that Bukau has in those low kicks. It's crazy. I like to see that fast hand pace from Masato. He's very rarely just throwing one. There we go. 
That was a lovely fake. I want to pause and let's talk about that for one second. It's something that you don't see too often from a lot of kickboxers and it's too bad. What they do is they fake the low kick, not by lifting, but they slide. They slide and they pump their hip forward. So he slid forward, saw the fake, saw Bokao go for the check off that fake one, and then just went bump, bump to follow up. Very nicely done. Great way to utilize height difference on the fake. Don't fake low and continue to go low. You fake low and then you charge up high. Let's continue. And Bacow, people forget, his hands are actually not bad. They're not the sharpest, but he's actually quite effective with them if he decides to let them go. Maybe not so much on the combo work, but single shots. Very impressive. And this is just a ferocious pace, and I think that's a very, very key part to Masato getting the win, is coming out fast. Beautiful uppercut there. Nice counter from Bacau. Masato's uppercuts are always on point. He's able to find that jaw in between the guard. Nice check there. You've got to deal with Bacau's low kicks, make sure he doesn't keep landing. Again, a good uppercut. Bacau, uh, sorry, Masato utilizing that jab very nicely. Like I was saying, you can't let Bukau dictate the pace of the fight. So even in this first round, if Masato gets thrown, he gets swept, he gets bullied around a little bit, he gets kicked in the leg. If he just sits back and lands nothing, Bukau will just end up taking over the pace of the fight, fighting at his pace, which is no good. So Masato taking his lickings in the first round, but sort of setting the tempo of the pace faster than Bukau wants, that is so important. His uppercuts are very, 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 very well done. I think an issue here before Bacow. Oh, there we go. Uppercut to the cross. This is a slightly controversial knockdown in my opinion. Like he definitely went down, no question. But he was in the middle of throwing a kick. Would he have got knocked down without, without that positioning that Bacow had? Possibly not, but still a knockdown either way. And they're just gunning here now. Masato trying to get the fight done. Hard to do against Bukau. He's not an easy guy to put away. Beautiful slip there. So we finish off the first round, guys. And obviously a 10-8 round from Masato. It was a very close round aside from that knockdown. Now, what we need to really understand here when we see this replay is this is not as clean a knockdown as you would always like to see but it is definitely a knockdown. He still gets knocked over based on the head impact. And he was landing many of those uppercuts beforehand, leading with the uppercut and then coming down the center over top was just very, very well done. And like I said before, Masato, he needs to keep that pace on Bukau. I'm a little surprised in this fight that Bukau didn't let his low kicks go more and work on controlling the range more and work on clenching more. That all surprised me a little bit. You would think that's something that he would really want to be doing. But I think sometimes going into the fight a little overconfident. Last time he just annihilated Masato. It wasn't even close. And I don't know if he went into this fight with enough respect. And that is an issue. You want to have as much respect as possible for your opponent and expect them to come and be their best self, and then there's no way that you can possibly be surprised if they're better than you were anticipating. If you anticipate that you're gonna roll them and they come in a little better, sometimes it's a shock. And hopefully we'd like to see Bacow get back to those low kicks. Nice knees, there we go. That's what he needs to be doing. Masato hunting again for that uppercut cross. There's the low kick again. Oh, Bacow's just a little bit too hittable to the head to stand and trade like that with Masato. Smart, smart work from Masato to keep that pressure with the hands. He doesn't throw one very often, it's multiple shots. He's keeping the pace on him, making sure that when he lands one, he follows with a second. And those low kicks are something that he had to be very, very concerned about because like we said before, Bacau kicks so hard. If you take too many of those, you're not going to be bouncing around. And Masato is utilizing nice movement. But still getting caught with those kicks now. And they take their toll. 
pace is fairly frantic again. I would assume, like I said before, Masato's plan is to keep the pace very high, elevated slightly outside of Bacow's comfort zone. And he's really hunting for that uppercut. I would like to see Masato throw some body shots too. That would be, I think, a very, a very good game plan. He's not getting too many of them going. There we go. That was a nice body shot leading off there. Very nice. Again, a little stutter fake. Oh, but then he just sits a little too long in the pocket with Bukau. Gets tagged for it. Ooh. Yeah, those low kicks later on in the tournament really hurt Masato. Good body shot again. And again, he's trying. I like that now. It's been a while since I've watched this fight. Breaking it down when you don't remember too much about it is quite is quite fun, actually. I like to see Masato start to move a little bit more. Just so he's out of range of that low kick. Because that's the danger, I would say, at the moment. You can see he looks just a little heavy on that front leg. A little ginger there. And what actually surprised me in this fight was Bacow's change up in style. It's like he came in and whether he was, you know, rocking an injury or went, ah, oh, you know what, I think I can put Masato away with hands. Um, I was just a little surprised that he didn't come out and just try to kick with him. Why he's getting into the boxing exchanges because those are what, that's where Masato is going to do best. That's where Masato is going to shine and it gives him the advantage over Bacow. Just like that. It's nice combos. Bacow is always resilient though on the combo uh, on the counter shots. He's very good at just hucking counter shots. He takes punches very well because he keeps his chin tucked so so tight. It's very rare to see Bacow get hit in the jaw. Most of the shots come off his forehead. He has that Thai style where everything's really hunched over and it works very well for absorbing shots. If you keep your chin high and you bounce around sort of karate style, you run the risk of getting clipped in the jaw and getting put away completely. Something to be aware of. Going into the third and final round, I would say Masato is definitely up. I didn't score that last round, wasn't watching really like that, but I'd say there's a chance Bukau won that round for sure. But Bukau is coming out like he knows he needs to do something special. Especially against Masato on the Japanese scorecards. You don't want to leave it to the judges over there when you're fighting the, the, the poster boy of, of K1. He's gotten a few questionable decisions, in my opinion. So Bakao coming out a little bit, a little bit faster is probably not the best plan. Whoa, good jab cross there. Masato's ability to explode in is very, very fine-tuned. That was a nice uppercut. Those uppercuts are working really well. It's something that the TIE Fighters, let's pause this for one moment. Something that the TIE Fighters are not that great at blocking. And let's explain why for a second. A TIE Fighter, uh, most of them, are they have this guard here, but they're not great at utilizing the elbows coming across to block the uppercuts, and that's one of the best ways. You either have to shell up completely or you have to get one elbow across. If you are just going from here and you're trying to drop your jaw, protect your sides, with your shoulders and especially with the long guard, if you long guard up, the uppercut is wide open. So if you're fighting a tie, looking for those uppercuts is probably a very, very smart choice. We just had a little, little headbutt there maybe. Little pause. Masato doesn't really take <laughs> damage like anybody else. He's just a unique dude. He takes so much damage, it's crazy. Little headbutt shouldn't slow him down. You see Masato pumping those that jab out. Working for that uppercut again. He utilizes the fake jab and then falling with the uppercut. Trying to get Bacow to get those arms extended out from his head. Again, nice cross. Full throwing the jab, throwing the jab. Coming over top with a slightly loopy cross. And again, he took the low kick but he landed the cross there. I would say it's safe to it's safe to assume that in Japan that cross is gonna win the exchange over the low kick. Look at Bukau's round kicks, just stopping people in their tracks. And again, that fake to the cross, just fantastic. 
What a fast paced fight. Just, just a, oh, just a beautiful combo there. This fight was just a treat for fans. Couldn't have really asked for much more. Jab again. If Bokao's not countering back, he's going to definitely lose out on the, the hand combo exchanges. Just if you let Masato go like that and you try and clench up with nothing, then Masato's going to win there. Great game plan by him. Throws the jab, the uppercut, he jams the distance. Uppercuts again. Whoa. Just fantastic work from Masato. Once he lands, he's just burying his head in. Getting out of range of those kicks. But Kyle's probably a little bit timid to engage in the clinch because he gets warned a lot for that. But right at that range, that's a terrible range for him to fight at. Masato's head is just so hard to just trying to trying to knock him down with punches is probably not a good decision. He takes punches so well. If I was Bakao and I was his trainer, I would have stuck with the low kicks. And man, what a fight that was. Just amazing. It's such a great way to watch those fighters and try and learn from them, try and learn strategy, what they would have been implementing. Honestly, I'm not sure what Bukau's strategy was in that fight. Like I said, I think he came in too confident. He just thought he would roll through Masato because he'd done that previously. Uh, I feel like if he would have stuck with the front kicks, the knees, try and throw him a couple times, utilize those low kicks more, it would have gone better in his favor. But that knockdown in the beginning threw things off. It really messed things up for him because then he's panicked and he thinks, oh my gosh, I got to get back up on the scorecards. And then he was trying to knock out Masato. Bad idea. It's just, it's just something that happens sometimes. You get thrown for a loop in a fight and you have to make sure you stick to the game plan. Even if the game plan was, all right, we lost the first round 10-8 and now we have to win, win round number two and round number three 10-9, which will give us a draw. And then we'll fight the extra round and win that one. But having the game plan and being able to stick to it is so essential, if you, especially if you know what your opponent's going to be bringing. And Masato, I mean, that's exactly what I would have expected out of Masato. If I was Bakao's camp, he's going to be trying to close the distance. He's going to be trying to jam all the kicks. Smart decision. Um, you know, my brother was 100% right when he thought 55% chance that Masato would win. That, that's how close it was. And that's the kind of faith that he had in Masato and his team to have that solid game plan. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed sitting down with me today watching Masato versus Bukau. If you'd never seen that before, that is just a treat uh, of a fight to watch. We'll do some more K1 Max videos in the future because the fights that these guys were putting on are almost unprecedented in the kickboxing world. Even now, even with myself, I'd like to think of myself as a fast, explosive, exciting fighter, but the, the fights these guys were putting on, the stylistic, stylistic differences between them were just so unique. We had guys from Holland, we had guys from Japan, we had guys from Thailand. They all brought their own styles and it just made for such an interesting group of people fighting each other with absolutely different fighting styles and tendencies. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, get subscribed if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.